We've been talking about the huge capex outlay and how much of it actually will be implemented and regalvanize India's credit cycle and investment cycle. Views diverge on what kind of impact it will have and whether it can suck in and draw in private sector capex, which is what we need. Last year's evidence was not great on that front. Uh, and we have also been discussing the other events during the afternoon, which sort of derailed the budget from a financial market perspective because it took over from the initial positive reaction from the budget and made it something else called together. Uh, and uh, that was, of course, the furor over the Adani Group stocks once again. And, of course, the looming FOMC meeting, which a lot of people believe may even be far more important than our budget in shaping sentiment for corporates and for stock market investors. Punita Kumar Sinha is a great person to talk to about all of these issues, as is Dinesh Kanabar, who joins in to talk about the tax angle. And very soon, Vijay Kedia also will talk about uh, the, uh, the uh, Adani Group episode. Uh, but Punita, let me start with you. But do you agree with the assertion that uh, tonight's FOMC meeting will be as important, if not more important, in shaping sentiment and the direction of financial markets more than today's budget itself? Uh, well, I think it's going to be very important. If the budget had uh, come up with a lot of negative surprises, then the budget would have also been quite important in terms of determining India's growth trajectory. But the budget has not delivered any negative surprises. So in light of that, I think the next big event um, is the FOMC meeting. And that is very important because it's going to set the trend for the global markets. And if the global flows get impacted negatively, obviously India will also be impacted negatively. Um, so I think uh, in my mind, yes, um, the global uh, investors are as important as domestic investors to the Indian markets. And to the extent that the global investors are watching the FOMC as closely as the Indian investors are watching the budget, both events were equally important. Well, tomorrow morning when we wake up, Punita, we'll have both the result of the FOMC meeting and we would have the hangover of the Adani episode route today. What would you summarize as global sentiment towards India at this point in time? Because FIIs have been selling India for largely for the most part of last year. Now these two factors, continued higher interest rates in the West, plus this Adani group which ex uh, episode which has exploded over the last few days, what is the combined, combined uh, impact of these two on sentiment towards India? Well, first of all, uh, we have to look at short-term sentiment and longer-term uh, you know, sentiment. And so let me take the longer term first, uh, because I'm on a number of global boards where they are looking to India, and not just the, my companies, but a lot of other companies have the same thought process uh, as a very important market, both for demand, growth, um, as well as for outsourcing, and then also in terms of uh, getting more uh, supply and adding um, it as China plus one. So every U.S. company is looking at India for its future growth. So from a longer term perspective, the companies itself and the strategic investors are going to keep investing in India uh, as if, if they get good valuations. Uh, I think they'll definitely keep coming because they don't have an alternative. Uh, now, if you look at the short-term sentiment, the short-term sentiment towards India uh, is not that it's negative, but everybody's unanimously of the view that the valuations in India are not as attractive as they are in some of the other emerging markets. Emerging markets as an asset class is um, looking attractive after a long time to begin with in terms of valuations, and the China reopening story has been an important trigger and the China valuations are actually so low as compared to India valuations. So while investors, strategics, etc., may not have the same confidence in the longer term stability of the Chinese markets and the regime there and what that might mean for them to invest for the long term, they definitely um, think that given the valuations where they are today, this is a place to reallocate some money or incremental flows. So. They're going to keep doing that, and not just China, some of the other Asian markets, Latin, Middle East. There are lots of other emerging markets that are attractively valued. And India does trade at a premium to its own historic valuations versus other emerging markets and other um, developed markets. Um, so I think if there's a correction in India and the valuations again rationalize um, to more normal levels, 
investors will come back to India mainly for the long-term stability that the country offers. Okay.